What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Hidden Heights Farm Vlog. This is my wife Rachel. My name is Kevin and today we're going to address a bunch of questions we've been getting about goats. Uh, basically we want to talk about what you need to know before getting goats or buying goats or getting a goat farm or bringing goats to your farm. Yeah, just the main things <clears throat> that you need to know to be prepared before you bring goats onto your property basically is what we're going to go over today. Right, so there's a lot more to know about goats than bringing home like a pet fish or a pet dog or something like that. There's a lot to know when you're raising goats. So we're going to touch on some of the main details and uh, try to uh, bring some experience that we have and to address a bunch of questions that we've been getting here in this video. So stay tuned and hopefully you guys will learn something if you're interested in bringing goats onto your farm or raising goats at your own house or whatever. All right guys, so there's several things to consider when you're looking to buy a herd of goats or any goats. Uh, do you guys want meat goats? Do you want dairy goats? Do you just want brush goats that are gonna clear up your property? Uh, you guys really need to do your research before you just go out there and buy any kind of goat Every breed of goat has different characteristics. Uh, we went, purposes. yeah, we went with the Spanish goats because they're more of a meat goat. They're more of a brush eating goat and they're very, very hardy and they don't get parasites very easy like some of the other goat breeds. Uh, every goat breed serves their purpose and goat breeds do, different goat breeds do different in certain regions of our country here in the United States. Uh, down here in the South, in Texas and Oklahoma, these Spanish goats do really well. Uh, other part regions of the country other goats might do better than these Spanish goats so we have Spanish we have Kiko goats right. we got pygmy goats as well pygmy goats in the past uh, for dairy goats we had Nigerian dwarfs we had Nubian uh, Nubian goats that was the Nubian was probably one of our favorites and Nigerian dwarf that's a smaller goat um, if you're brand new into getting livestock if you're really, really, you know, apprehensive about getting a larger breed of goat, you might start with the pygmies. They're super easy. They're easy um, to handle. They're easy to care for. Right. And you get your feet wet, sort of say. The reason we went with this koi line is because they are smaller bodied um, goats. They're not big and they're not really hard to handle. Where you have the Kiko goats over here that are a little bit... Uh, broader and, and just a meteor bigger type frame goat. goats they're bigger framed and they're a little more to handle so you might take that into consideration when you're doing your research on your different breeds of goats um, the size you know what you're prepared for we have a system over here where it does make it a little easier to handle now uh, so we can take on those br uh, bigger breeds of of goats that we have now right guys this is a, a working shoot this is not a must but if you do get in the numbers and you get you know quite a bit of goats in your herd you want something like this to make it a lot easier we got this little corral system set up and we got videos out on this as well so go check that out but this is not a must like i said like rachel said if you're just getting started start out with some of the miniature sized goats right. and you don't need something like this you can do it you know on one acre if you want to right so if you're starting out with goats i definitely recommend you know doing your research like kevin said um, you really need to decide if you want either milking goats now there's lots of benefits if you want to take the time <clears throat> to milk your goats if you're wanting to make soaps and um all that good stuff that you can get out of you know your milk goats but do your research because right. you can't just milk a goat uh, one time a week. That's like most people milk their goats twice a day and right. you have to stay on top of it. So the milk goats do take some dedication, but if you're wanting to make those different things out of goat's milk, it's, it's worth it if right. you have the time. So you definitely need to decide which route you want to go. Like Kevin and I said, we started out with Nigerian dwarfs. We've had, we have the pygmies, we've got Spanish, we've got Kiko. Um, we've we've had some other breeds in the past, but so far these uh, have been our favorite, I think. Right. All right, so let's get to the first topic. Uh, you need to know where you're going to put your goats. Are they going to be on a dry feedlot? Are you going to have them in a pasture with all grass? Are you going to have them in a pasture with grass and woods like we have? So basically, right now it's wintertime here in Oklahoma. Um, it's almost December. And you know, there's not hardly any green grass left. There's a little bit of green stuff. Uh, all the leaves are all brown and pretty much dead, which they do eat them, but they gotta have food and you gotta supplement 
their diet with feed and or hay. So let's talk about the first thing. You gotta have hay. Um, you gotta have an, they have to have access to hay. So we have this bell feeder here, and I'm not gonna go too much detail because I got other videos talking about it. But uh, we got this hay, this big round bell of hay. This is what we choose to feed our goats because it lasts a little longer when you have several head of goats. Uh -huh. And it just helps, uh, you know, if the weather's really bad uh -huh. and they gotta sit here in this barn all day long, they can sit here and they're always gonna have food. You know, they might not like it as much as grain or something like that, but they're not gonna starve to death. When they can't get out and forage on brush and grass and weeds, they can always sit in this barn, stay dry, and they're gonna have the hay. Right, and another option, if you don't have the space or the, the hay ring like we've got here, you can always go with alfalfa pellets, uh, and they don't take up as much room for the alfalfa feeders and things like that, so you can use that. Yeah, so like Rachel said, um, the alfalfa pellets are great. Usually, if you're on a smaller sized farm or just an acre farm or something like where you don't have hardly much grass and stuff like that, um, and you don't have a large number of goats, right. you can supplement with the alfalfa pellets. Uh, they are a little more expensive, but if you only have, say, five or ten goats, you can do it, and it's not that All right, guys, topic number two, this little feeder here. So this is an elevated feeder. It's eight foot long, and what this does is it keeps their feed off the ground. So if you guys um, read up on goats or anything, they're really prone to parasites. One way they get parasites is eating off the ground. Uh, the worms climb up on blades of grass or whatever. The goats put their mouth down towards the ground and uh, the worms get in there and lay their eggs and do all that type of stuff. So if you are feeding like in the winter, like we are here, every evening we come out here and we give them a little bit of grain in here and then of course they got the hay. But these elevated uh, grain feeders are perfect for keeping their feed off the ground, especially if it's a little wet or mucky out. That way your goats are not eating their feed straight off the ground and it stays dry. Okay guys, number three is super important you need to offer your goats loose minerals. This is super important for their health. Um, they do not get enough minerals. Even though, you know, we feed grain, they have plenty of hay, they have to have loose minerals, uh, mainly because we are copper deficient and they do not get enough copper. You can look back at some of our other videos. We've talked about this in detail. I won't go into detail here, but they do not get enough copper from all the other food sources. You have to offer them loose minerals. It's, it's really, really important. Um, another uh, way that we offer minerals is the mineral blocks. And we've got several types of those also. Yeah, we got a video out on this if you guys are interested. Right. You can go check it out. These are working really well. But it's super important to offer your goats minerals. Right, this is something that is an easy way to get to make sure your goats get the vitamins and minerals that they need. See, they're going to town on it. Yep. They have to have it. So the next thing you need to think about when you're considering getting into goats is, do you have adequate shelter? Uh, we have probably about, oh, we got 27 goats over here. So we have a 30 by 30 barn that they can get in. It's winter time, like I said. Um, they, these are a hardy breed of goats. We got Spanish and the Kiko. So they do not have to have a shelter all year long. You know, we got lots of trees and stuff like that. Uh, these are very hardy, like I said. But if you do have structure, like a shed or a barn that they can get into, um, that's even better. It helps them stay warm, stay dry. You can feed them inside. It makes your life easier as well. And uh, even if you don't have a big barn like this, don't be discouraged. I'll show you guys a little shelter that I built many years ago that works just fine for keeping them dry. And the main thing is keeping them out of the north wind if you're in very, very harsh winters. That will help them stay a lot healthier and make everybody's life easy. Alright guys, so we're out here at one of our little sheds that we built. And we've actually used this for hogs and goats. But something like this is perfect. If you don't have a large number of goats, this will help them stay dry, stay warm. You can put your straw down in here. Give them a nice little bed to lay in. And uh, that's pretty much all this is. I think it's eight by 12. 
six by eight, something like that. Oh, we've got another one over here. And we here have another there. one over here as well. So if you guys just have a couple of acres that you have goats on, something like this is not real expensive to put together and you can do it pretty quick. And this will house, oh, probably four to eight goats on this size. And I think this one is a, yeah, this one here is a six by 10. So, you know, this didn't cost very much money. I think we built it out of scrap. So something to consider if you're only wanting a handful of goats. All right, guys, the next thing to consider is a livestock guardian. And in this case, we have Mojo the Great Pyrenees. He is a livestock guardian dog. And then I will take you over and show you the daisy here in just a minute. So these things are vital if you have very many acres. If you got a ranch or a big farm, you got to have something to protect your herd. And if you're in rural, very rural. Right. Like if you guys are in town or somewhere near the city and you don't have a huge piece of land and you know if you're in an urban area where there's not a lot of uh, predators like mountain lions or bobcats or coyotes or stray dogs then you probably Hot don't cows. have to have a <laughs> livestock guardian dog but this one here guards our goats and our chickens and our turkeys so uh, and skater yep and we got skeeter <laughs> so let's go check out our other livestock guardian dog like I said this is Mojo and he is a great Pyrenees Okay, this is our second livestock guardian dog, and she stays in here full time with the Spanish and Kiko goats. And she's a female Anatolian shepherd. And we just posted a video of her fighting off a bobcat and saving her goats from that. So go check that out. Like I said, guys, these things are vital because if you don't have any kind of guardian and you have very many goats, there's, it's just a matter of time before something, some kind of predator tries to come and uh, attack your goats or eat your goats. All right, these are some of our pygmy goats that we have here. And they're the smaller breed that we were going to that are usually pretty easy to handle. And they're really loud right now because it's dinner time and they are hungry. So they're not going to be quiet. But anyway, these are really easy to handle. So if you guys are just starting out and just want to kind of get your feet wet in the goat, world these are a good goat to go with because they're super small and they're like pets they're very very friendly and easy to handle so you might want to consider starting with them um, these are more our pets <laughs> all right guys so another thing to consider if you're wanting to get goats do you have water uh, we have a nice size pond that is currently under construction we have a dozer here now and uh, they've just been building this for us we had one they're making it a little bit bigger so this is something that should stay uh, with water, filled with water throughout summer, winter, whenever. Um, that is something where we don't have to worry about if the goats have water or not. So here's another thing to consider. Do you have, uh, if you don't have a pond, do you guys have access to a uh, water faucet? Do you have electric near it? If you guys raise goats in the winter time, it's a possibility that their water is going to freeze. Do you are you going to be home all the time? Are you going to be able to break their water, or can you just get an automatic uh, little heater that sits in there? If you got access to electric close to your water supply, you know that's something that you need to consider. I'll walk over here and show you how we keep our ghosts with fresh water. Okay, so this is the automatic water that I've been talking about. This is made by Little Giant, and uh, it's right here by this water hydrant. Got this little top tank here. And this is just to keep full time 24 7 access to fresh, clean drinking water for this herd of goats. And I keep this here because if it does freeze, I can bust it. I haven't broke out the, uh, the electric feeder that I usually put in these things yet, but if you want to get the little folder, I'll get that. And um, the way that works is it has a thermostat in there. If the water gets down to like 35 degrees, it kicks on and it keeps the water liquid and keeps it from freezing. So uh, that's something to consider, you know, that does take electric. And uh, if you guys got to be at work all the time and you don't get home till late every night, that is something that you can put in your water and don't have to worry about it freezing over, so. All right, guys, so the last thing, but certainly not the least, is fencing if you don't have good fencing do not even consider getting goats it's worth the money to spend the money up front and do your fencing first or you're just going to have a big headache 
So I'm going to show you guys the fencing that we have that we don't like and then I'll show you what we have that works the best. So right here we have the 32 inch field wire the two strands of barbed wire and this is not ideal and especially these holes here and this is just regular field wire we leave the horns on all our goats because they're easier to handle like that and of course they always think the grass is greener on the other side so they're always sticking their head through here one of these bigger squares getting their horn stuck almost every day so take my advice do not use this field wire if you're going to be having horned goats yes absolutely not and uh we're going to take you over here and show you guys what the good fencing looks like okay so i'm over here on our hillside and uh this is something where we had to have really good fencing because if you look this is way down in a holler below our our house here and uh you know this isn't something that we can see from our house so we can't afford a goat getting their head stuck down here not knowing that they're stuck. So if you look here, these are 4x4 four four squares. This is the red brand 4x4 four four sheep and goat wire. It's 48 inches high and they cannot get their head stuck in there and varmints cannot come through it as well. So this is the, the best fencing that uh, I believe that you can put up for goats and sheep. Unless you want to go with 8 foot, uh, that'd be super expensive. This stuff is a little more expensive per roll than the regular field wire but i'm telling you take my advice spend the money up front and go with this four x four stuff if you want to raise goats it will save you money and a headache in the long run all right so another thing we want to go over with you goats are a herd animal so you don't want to just bring one goat home uh that you just that won't be good that will not be very happy they'll be will depressed they? yeah they'll be depressed so you need at least two or more goats um i think we started out with like three or four when we yeah. first started that's a good number to start with if you're just getting into it and also don't worry about getting registered goats right you know you're going to spend a lot of money if you go and buy a registered goat if you're just getting into goats there's no need to spend all that money up front just worry about getting a healthy looking animal to start off with yeah and with that being said <clears throat> one thing i will strongly advise do not go to auctions or sell barns and buy your first goats or buy any goats at that um that's you know if someone has a sick goat or a goat that has problems they're going to take it to a sell barn and although it sounds like you might get a better deal at a sell barn or be able to buy more goats uh, just consider you're you're liable to bring home diseases or sick goat or many other problems right. And if you already have goats you could infect all your other goats. So exactly. just consider that you know search out a local <clears throat> um, Smaller farm that's selling some of their their goats um, and and a lot of times they will help you get started um, If you're not sure where to start and you still have questions, you know, you guys can always uh, contact us message us email us contact your local vet you know that deal with small animals like that um it any anybody can to, can uh, raise goats it's right. not hard to do just start small so that pretty much concludes the video we thank you guys so much for watching and like rachel said if you guys have questions or whatever like always just email us leave a comment and we will try to reply to you guys and hopefully this video helps you if you guys are interested in raising goats um I don't know, there's a lot more to it than what we've covered, but that's pretty much the basics. So uh, thanks so much for watching. You got anything? Nope. Like I said, if you guys got questions, just let us know. Right. I think we pretty much <coughs> went over all the basics like pretty Kevin much. said. So most importantly, good fencing. You know, you need a, a, a decent shelter, water, food, um, and start small. Right. That's our main things right there. Right. Alright guys, so if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you next time.